Japan International Corporation Agency. Brigadier Patrick Mwesige, who is the Commissioner for Patriotism in the Office of the President. Uh, for purposes of clarity, you will forgive me, I take off the mask, but uh, be assured that here at NSPC, at our Secretariat, we observe SOPs of the, of the COVID regulations. Um, you, you saw me washing hands down there. You saw me sanitize and uh, we wear masks full time and we have reduced our working staff so that we have a minimum staff to observe the regulations. This place is the Secretariat of the National uh, uh, Patriotism uh, clubs, uh, where I'm the commissioner, and here I have people below me. Uh, I have the assistant commissioner, who is also in charge of monitoring and uh, evaluation. There is uh, uh, there are two principal officers: the principal officer in charge of monitoring and evaluation, and the principal officer in charge of education, uh, uh, information, communication. And then we have a pass, principal assistant secretary, and other support staff. Oh, we also have a communications officer and other support staff. This uh, program of patriotism dates way back in 2009, when the president of Uganda, His Excellency, uh, General Yoweri Kabutam Seveni uh, launched it and the purpose was to inculcate norms and values among the school going children and other youth who may be uh, reached out who are outside the school system. Uh, when he launched this program he appointed my predecessor comrade uh, Henry Masko at that time who was a uh, lieutenant colonel by rank and uh, Comrade Odauk Paul as his deputy, and whom I have since repressed. And uh, Comrade Odauk has been repressed by Mr. Magom Mubarak, who is my deputy, and other staff. Uh, when the president launched this program, he had in his mind um, the, the gaps, the ideological gaps that was being uh, manifested through behavior, through the characters of our children. And he was aiming at uh, inculcating or transforming their mindsets through ideological studies uh, to transform them, to change them, and uh, so that they can behave uh, the way they are expected to behave. Uh, our mission, our vision as a secretariat uh, is to be the best student and youth program that nurtures patriotic citizens of Uganda. Our mission is to inculcate norms and values of patriotism in the student and the youth of Uganda uh, in order to develop uh, responsible citizens. Our mandate is to develop uh, and coordinate patriotism clubs in secondary schools 
and study groups in uh, tertiary institutions like universities. Uh, this program is supported by a policy and legal framework uh, in our books of law, uh, which I will quote. The first one is the Constitution of the Republic of Uganda. Uh, chapter 29 of the, of the National Objectives and Directive Principles of State Policy uh, obligates every Ugandan to be loyal and patriotic and uh, promote the well-being of Uganda. So you can see that this chapter emphasizes that all of us Ugandan citizens must be patriotic. Um, then there is uh, Article 17, Clause 2. Uh, which emphasizes the first one and obligates us and, and uh, obligates us uh, to able-bodied citizens to train militarily uh, for the defense of our constitution and the territorial integrity of Uganda and that the government of Uganda will provide such facilities for this training and uh, as you can see this is one of them uh, there is also the Education White Paper, which was written in 1989, and uh, the, in that paper, in goal number five, categorically states that the purpose of the education system in Uganda should be to promote national consciousness and patriotism and ideological clarity among our children. Um, there are other policies like the Uganda Vision 2040. When you read on page 5, 18, 94, and 95, it clearly stipulates that without ideological training, without ideological clarity, it's very difficult for any government to realize its, its goals. And in that vision it stated that our goal is to transform the Ugandan citizens from a backward society, from poverty, and uh, usher them into a middle income status where each citizen earns not less than 9,500 US dollars and also to transform our economy into a modern industrialized economy. So we can't do that unless our ideological clarity is categorical, is clear. Um, there is also the NDP3. NDP3 of the National Development Plan 3 emphasizes that uh, the if it is to, to succeed, Ugandans must be ideologically clear. They must be trained to realize where they have come from and where they are and where they want to go, what, uh, what everyone will be doing and with what means and how we shall get where we want to go. Uh, in, in, in summary, that means that Ugandans must be ideologically trained ideologically trained to, you know, to transform their mindset. Because if you have people, for instance, whose mindset is laziness, whose mindset is non-production, whose mindset is, uh, you know, divisionism, lack of unity, it's very difficult to use such a population to transform themselves. Um, then we have the national culture, uh, national value, Culture policy, which was promulgated by His Excellency the President, but written by the Minister of Ethics and Integrity in 2013. Value number 10 is talking about national consciousness and patriotism. So, as you can see, uh, the intention of, of government is to make sure that you know they create a paradigm shift in the thinking, in the lifestyles in the behaviors of Ugandans to be able to uplift themselves from where they are and take them to uh, the middle class income where we want to take them. In medieval Europe, in, uh, in Greece, where it started, in their language they had the word uh, known as patria, patria, and it meant fatherland, or it means fatherland. And uh, then in, um, in, in Latin, in Latin, there was, in the language of Latin, they had the word uh, patriote. Patriote to mean the lover of fatherland. 
Now, the, the English speakers uh, co- uh, put together these two words from where they derived the word patriotism. The love of our country and the willingness to serve and to sacrifice for it. You see, the Greeks at that time um, actually were undergoing a very turbulent uh, times and uh, and in what we call the Peloponnesian Wars, the Greeks fought wars with their northern neighbors and their eastern neighbors for over 300 years, the Peloponnesian Wars. So it was imperative that every citizen be mobilized under the the gist of, of love of country. So every citizen was mobilized to go and defend the fatherland, patria, defend the fatherland, patria. Uh, even women and uh, you know were in the backyard training, and you know who formed the the the, the logistical chain uh, to supply the war front. Children would be developed in in, in barracks, in regiments. Training all their time, uh, except for slaves at that time. So later on, uh, more more struggles like in the you know United States, the Chinese, um, they adopted this word patriotism, where which they used to mobilize their citizens, you know, to to, to liberate themselves and to defend their nations, and. Um, Therefore, this word, word connotes uh, the, the devotion, the devotion, the commitment of the citizens to defend themselves, to defend their territory against their enemies. So this is what it means that citizens volunteer to serve, to defend their country, to defend their constitution, to defend their values. Uh, so here, when we come back here, patriotism to us means the love of Uganda, our values, and our willingness to defend our constitution and our country. His Excellency the President, in starting this program, of course, had our history in mind. Uganda's history was a turbulent history, characterized by a lot of hatred, divisionism, lack of focus, lack of ideological clarity, and he wanted us, of course, to start with young people to transform their mindsets so that they can form a clear-headed generation that will be responsible for transforming Uganda. Um, Of course, you you remember that we had other programs like Mchaka Mchaka, which, you know, were, were stopped. And um, there was a law, and, and the ideological consciousness of Ugandans went down. That's when we started the divisions and in, in hatred, you know, resurfaced. So it was imperative that we start such a program and uh, we redirect the minds of our children. We do training, ideological training. We, have, uh, we train them in many subjects. The most important or core of which is uh, our history. Then we also train paramilitary because we want to demystify the instruments of, 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 uh, of violence. The gun, you remember in our history, uh, people who are monopolizing this instrument used to misuse it and to terrorize the population. So we want to demystify it, that every Ugandan knows how to the basics of handling a gun, so that we can't defend ourselves. We have regional coordinators and district coordinators, and then in the school we have the patron who is responsible for the program. Then once in a while, of course, this this outside our mandate, but we go out in the youth outside the school where necessary, because they are also young people, and we teach them. So those are our key output areas. When WHO declared COVID-19 as a pandemic, the Ministry of Health reactivated the national 
Task Force. So from history, we have been managing the previous pandemics, SARS, Ebola, and our motto was to stay safe in order to treat others. We are looking at training healthcare workers continuously. We've applied this capacity building to the entire country. We should continue getting the essential services that we have been getting before so that we don't die from the other condition when we are trying to prevent COVID-19. Our mission to ensure the safety of Ugandans is long-standing and we promise to see it through till COVID-19 is eradicated. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health with support from the Japan International Cooperation Agency. When His Excellency the President launched this program, he had given us six key areas in which to emphasize among the children. The first is uh, academic excellence. The teachers were supposed to emphasize these children that their first role in school is to study and get knowledge and skills and know-how uh, so that they are of value. The second one is uh, spiritual and, uh, and moral uprightness, that we need to be godly. We need to be godly uh, so that we are people of morals, people of ethics. Of course, the other one is uh, physical fitness. He said uh, children should keep doing exercises so that they keep fit. Uh, he's also, he also emphasized uh, good discipline for the children to be disciplined, to keep in school, to avoid uh, take using drugs, to avoid promiscuity, to avoid surgery. The last one, of course, is articulating government ideology, that these children must be astute in articulating government ideology and that they must understand it because you cannot execute the government vision, government development plans when you don't understand its ideology or its principles for which it stands. And uh, His Excellency has emphasized that our ideology has four main pillars. The first one being patriotism, which we are handling here. The second one, Pan-Africanism. Third one, socioeconomic transformation. And the fourth one is democracy. There are some contradictions we have made in the field. You hear people saying, how can you teach me to love my country? You know, that this is automatic. When I'm born, you know, my blood, you know, like I love my mother, my blood loves, loves the country. I, I, I would want to, to, to reiterate that as, as one grows up, as one grows up, there are many things that you pick up, some negative, some positive. So it is imperative that we conduct ideological training aimed at detoxifying, at cleaning our minds and being set for national transformation. The second contradiction I need to clarify is that uh, you hear some parents, some people saying that we are militarizing their children and saying why. That training is very, very crucial and important for every human being. Like I said in the introduction, our history is a history of gun violence. So we need to demystify that. Secondly, when you look at military training, you know, the first profession in the world was the military. Military training, you know, imparts or inculcates a lot of skills, a lot of skills in a human being, you know, like working in a team. You know, when you are in a parade and they say, turn right, all of you must turn together and hold at the same time. So this is to inform you, to educate you that in the world, you must act with other people, not alone. And of course, to create alertness in your head, so that you are alert all the time. When you gauge the children who have undergone our training and those who have not, there is a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, the last one, of course, is uh, uh, people who say that uh, 
they cannot be patriotic when they are poor, when the government hasn't provided for them, when they are living in uh, poor conditions and so on. Patriotism or love of your country uh, is not directly related to what you have gained from it. Sitting and wishing does not make a man. Actions speak louder than words. Men, positively, act now and reach greater heights. What we have achieved in the last seven, eight years. Uh, for me, I took over um, three years ago. We have opened 4,000 plus clubs in all our schools and uh, over 40 study groups in, uh, in 40 plus universities in Uganda. And, and the, the, at first, you know, the president had wanted this program to be start with a few. That's why he called it clubs. But now we have of course uh, seen that it, it is not worth it to have few children uh, ideologically oriented but the whole population. So we have called it a call. So when we say 4,000 clubs, each club most cases means the whole school. So we are now uh, looking at the whole school concept. And uh, in the last seven years we have trained over 600,000 students and teachers uh, as a secretariat, but there are those who are inducted in schools, and I think I can talk of a million. Uh, if I may give you an example, for instance, there used to be a lot of strikes in schools, but if you interview head teachers, they will tell you strikes have ended because of this program. Everyone has come to like their school, to love themselves, and to love the country. We have rallied many stakeholders in the country who didn't know about the program. If you look at the church, for instance, the church now supports us. And you know, it, it also has the same cause. Patriotism concerns love for the nation. When you have love for the nation, you should have pride for it. And if there is anything you should be proud of, should be your nation. And that's what means patriotism. We have also managed to publicize the program and I think very few people now in the country uh, have not heard about this program. They may not know the nitty-gritty of it, but most Ugandans now will ask you, uh, will, 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 will ask to know what is this program? How can I benefit? Then of course the transient nature of our children because they don't stay in school forever. If you train this lot and it goes before you come back to train another lot, it means those who are there will, will remain untrained and the club will not be active because of the knowledge gap. Um, we also have a problem of feedback. Uh, of course, uh, our coordinators are full-time teachers and they are busy and sometimes we, there is a gap of feedback especially on the impact of the program. Uh, then the, the exposure of our alumni to negative uh, social dynamics. When we train them, we clean their minds and they go out again, they mix with untrained public in, in the negative uh, you know, social dynamics. They are polluted again. But uh, on the whole, I'm happy because in our attempts to follow them up, we have found that they are still upright, where they are employed, they are okay. When there is mobilization, they are the ones who are leading mobilization. Most of them have contested in leadership positions. They have won. So you see that program is, is really highly productive. Uh, of course, you know, because of COVID, schools are not uh, uh, working, but uh, we are intending to, to train scientifically now. We will look out for small numbers of children and train them scientifically. Um, but we want this program to be media heavy. We are going now to go to, 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 to train on the media, to inform the public on the media. All these years we've not been having you know, a standardized uh, guidebook to guide the teachers and the standardized syllabus. I have formed a technical committee of, of uh, you know, able scholars and uh, ideologically clear 
Ugandans, which is going to write. Um, they have already started, actually, they are almost a month. They have already started, we want to write, to write standardized, uh, well informed guidebook so that every teacher should have it and be able to conduct. Even when you have not passed through our training, you should be able to read and follow the guidelines. I must say that the, our journey has been a good journey. I can't say it has been bad. It has been a good journey. We have trained the Ugandans. We have seen positive fruits. I'm very, very grateful to His Excellency, the President of Uganda, General Yod Kabuta Museveni, for his constant support, uh, both in resources and um, ideological guidance. Of course, the Minister of the Presidency and his staff who are always uh, guiding us. Um, so the journey will continue and uh, I'm seeing this program expanding. I'm seeing this program going all over the country. Uh, therefore, in the near future, there will be need to have a policy that covers the entire country so that all of us benefit at the same time. I want to thank you, listeners, thank you for supporting us and thank you for your goodwill. May God bless you. And please take care. Don't die of COVID. Observe the COVID regulations and leave.